my dear sisters and brothers, I just want to share with you my reflection today when we celebrate the feast of Our Lady of the Holy Rosary based on the two sentences from the two readings. First, from the first reading taken from the book, the Act of the Apostles. Mary was among the apostles and among the first Christians to pray after the Lord went up to heaven. Uh, as you know, when we lost somebody in our family, we suffer an uh, emptiness in our heart, in our family. For example, uh, our grandfather or our grandmother or even our very own sick uh, uh, parents left us forever. So we suffer an emptiness that no one, nothing in this world can fill up. Very sad and we need long, long, long time to be healed, to, to be recovered. So it also happened to the apostles and to the first Christians when Jesus was crucified and he died and he was buried and then after his resurrection from the dead he went up to heaven. He left a, an emptiness in the heart of Mary, his mother, of his uh, disciples, the, the apostles, and also of the believers. So now they decided to go to pray. And in that very sad and uh, uh, challenging moment, the apostles and the first Christians were very happy to have Mary, the mother of Christ, the mother of God, and their mother too, to pray with them and to pray for them. So my dear sister, brother, today we too, sometimes we suffer a thought, a form of emptiness in our heart. Though we do have a family, we do have wife or husband and very uh, lovely uh, children. But only God knows that we are suffering from a form of emptiness, right? So, whom shall we go to to ask for healing, for consolation, for comfort, if not Jesus? And sometimes very hard for us to go to Jesus uh, straight. We need somebody to teach us how to approach the most successful way and who, who can help us except Mary, the mother of Jesus, the one who bore Jesus in her womb, as uh, we may say, uh, uh, real, true, and uh, uh, the uh, authentic uh, mother of Jesus. And being mother of Jesus from the first moment of conception in her womb, Mary understood very well the uh, nature, the uh, joy and sorrow of her son. She took good care of Jesus from childhood up to the time Jesus left her to go to mission. So now in heaven, Mary still um, keeps her promise to take good care of all of us 
when uh, standing at the foot of the Holy Cross, she accepted uh, the, the word of Jesus, Mother, hear your son, pointing to St. John the Apostle, our representative. And Mary, uh, just uh, in silence, accepted the uh, recommendation of Jesus. So, so far, we are children of God, children of uh, Jesus, believers in Jesus, and we are also children of Mary. So, don't hesitate, my dear sister, brother, to come to Mary first, and she will lead us to Jesus. And then, our problems, uh, how uh, severe, how big, they uh, may be will be solved because of the powerful intercession of Mary, Mother of God, Mother of Jesus, and our Mother. Okay? And in the second reading, we hear St. Paul teach us that at the fullness of time, the Almighty God sent His Son Jesus into the world, born of a woman. Here, we can see the very high dignity of Mary and also that of all uh, women. Because when God created man in His image, the book of Genesis stressed uh, this point. God made them in his image and God made them male and female man and woman so we are in terms of uh, the image of uh, uh, the image of God and in terms of the human person we women and men are equal in the size of God so no reason for us to uh, to practice some very uh, uh, gender discrimination. Sad to say some, in some families, people prefer boys to girls. Why? Being Christians, we are not allowed to practice this uh, gender discrimination. Boys and girls, are uh, all made in the image of God. And, and either gender was given a mission by God. Being um, a boy, they have the mission to be one day uh, become a husband, a father, together with a girl given by God the mission of being a wife. A mother. All together they will build a very happy family to continue the uh, presence of the human race on earth according to the order of God the Creator. God bless them, the book Genesis reported, and ordered them be virtual and multiply, fill the earth up. So don't be afraid of overpopulation. No, this is uh, fake news, I assure you. They give us fake news that we may be suffer from overpopulation. Population, no. Because of our selfishness, because of our ambition, very, very selfish ambition. We don't want to share the natural resources given to us by God. The rich become richer and the poor become poorer. Why? Because of our personal interests and because of our selfishness, right? So, we pray to the Lord to bless uh, both girls and boys and we should avoid to commit the very great sin 
by turning our neighbor, uh, no matter uh, male or female they may be, into an object. I would like to stress on this approach. We may commit a very grave sin by turning our neighbor into an object to satisfy our ambition, our wickedness. Because in each one of us, there is the beautiful image of God. No matter who we may be in society, rich or poor, um, young or old, powerful or powerless, we are all equal in the sight of God because of our human dignity, regardless of our gender, our different gender. The difference of our gender is not a reason for us to oppose uh, one another, but rather to, to uh, complete, to uh, fill up each and other uh, gender uh, imperfection. So again, in this Holy Mass, we thank God for giving us uh, as His image in two uh, different but uh, complementary genders. Uh, being um, uh, in a woman, both are gifts from God. And we also pray for the mothers to be proud of their motherhood given by God. And uh, with regard to the uh, men, we have to respect, to love, and to uh, uh, take good care of uh, the other uh, gender. We never take uh, advantage of, uh, as if people wrongly say, the, uh, uh, the stronger sex and look down on the other, uh, uh, as if uh, uh, a weaker sex. No, this is a very wrong conception in our society. In the light of the Holy Bible, in the light of the uh, uh, holiness and the uh, divine motherhood of the Blessed Virgin Mother, we have to uh, put our mind, our heart, our way of life under the enlightenment by the Word of God. And we thank the Blessed Mary for giving us her Son, Jesus Christ, to be our Lord and Savior. And we also thank her for her continual um, intercession and have of gui and guidance. And we continue to ask her for her love and care, in particular by praying the Rosary. Amen. Can you understand? Let us renew our faith in God the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit.